Weather Mike, weather, weather Mike. Weather Mike, weather Mike. Weather, weather, weather Mike, weather Mike, weather Mike, weather Mike, weather Mike. Weather Mike, weather Mike, weather, 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 weather. Right now, on the National Weather Desk, another storm forms in the Atlantic as we track the tropics. Winds right now at 50 miles per hour, bringing some heavy rain, gusty winds to some of the northern Leeward Islands there. A nor'easter could bring major flooding to the east coast. The mid-Atlantic New England usually hit the hardest because that's where the strongest part of the storm typically occurs. We look back at two record-setting hurricanes. I was underneath that debris. I was underneath that beam. Why pumpkin spice season might have you feeling blue. Our bodies are really trying to readjust and um, get back in rhythm, but it just can't. Um, it's shorter, darker days, um, and our body's just trying to get out of that blue space. And the La Nina weather pattern officially arrives. From our nation's capital, this is the National Weather Desk. Good morning and welcome to the National Weather Desk. I'm meteorologist Matt Ritter. We're tracking the tropics again this morning as Tropical Storm Jerry is likely to strengthen into a hurricane. Here's Florida meteorologist Lauren Oleski. Tropical Storm Karen developed. That's not a concern for us. And then we've got Tropical Storm Jerry, a little closer to home, but of course not going to be an issue in any direct way for us either. Winds right now at 50 miles per hour, bringing some heavy rain, gusty winds to some of the northern Leeward Islands there. It's going to be continuing off towards the north and then eventually curving uh, east. This is still off of our coastline. However, might still send some rough uh, coastal conditions along the eastern United States. So we've got Jerry, we've got Karen. There are no other waves out there right now, but if anything else develops, Next two names on our list are Lorenzo and then Melissa. On Thursday, NOAA announced the arrival of La Nina. It's a natural climate pattern marked by cooler than average water temperatures in the equatorial Pacific that gradually causes changes in upper atmospheric patterns. And this season, La Nina conditions are expected through at least February. Usually, a La Nina winter means the southern half of the United States is drier than normal and parts of the northwest and Ohio Valley are a bit wetter than normal. Essentially, it makes temperatures warmer or cooler than normal, depending on the region. Now, flooding could be a big issue along the East Coast this weekend as a nor'easter is expected to begin impacting the region later today. Meteorologist Eric Kostriva has more. Well, we have a nor'easter on the way for the eastern seaboard, and what likely is the type of that nor'easter is a Miller A. And the reason behind that is a Miller A type nor'easter originates around a front or in the Gulf of Mexico, which we're going to see that system developing off the Carolina coastline. It is going to track further on off to the north, maybe not as far as New England. It could get pushed out to sea before that happens, but it is going to intensify as it moves up the coastline, potentially even moving inland before it gets pushed out to the mid-Atlantic New England usually hit the hardest because that's where the strongest part of the storm typically occurs but right now at least how things are stacking up it is going to be into the mid-Atlantic of course the Carolinas as well and if it is the winter it's not cold enough just yet for icy conditions. Those can occur as far south as Georgia and the Carolinas as that colder air seeps in from the north and the northwest. You can also get severe weather in Florida right along that frontal boundary. What we're talking about with this storm is a lot of heavy rain and quite a bit of flooding to go along with very strong winds. And yesterday marked one year since Hurricane Milton devastated portions of Florida. 
It's bad enough that the storm hit the west coast of the state as a powerful Category 3 hurricane, but it also spawned a deadly tornado outbreak that traveled up the Treasure Coast. Milton tied the record for the most intense Atlantic hurricane ever recorded over the Gulf. Jack Wu revisits the devastation of one community and shows how residents are faring one year later. A road to recovery one year later. Hurricane Milton brought tornadoes to the Treasure Coast last October. The Spanish Lakes community near Fort Pierce experienced over triple-digit wind speeds, ripping apart homes and devastating families. Gina moved into the neighborhood less than a year before the tornado hit. Even with her roof torn apart, she says she's one of the lucky ones. We still had a home. These other people don't have homes. So when you get in places where you feel bad for yourself, you stop and, and give gratitude because you actually still have something. Other people still carry the tornadoes with them emotionally. Virginia had less damage to her home, but says the memory of that day is still fresh in her mind. I did have PSD for a while. I was really, really scared. If I heard a loud noise or something, I would, you know, like, wow, or the wind came up. But now I'm just kind of, you know, I prayed about it and things are getting much better. Many homes are seen with new metal roofs while others were damaged beyond repair, as seen by the empty dirt lots. Despite this, some residents decided to stay. We came to Florida for a purpose, and we really felt like we were supposed to be here. Um, our neighbors became family, community, and it could happen anywhere. We're, we're still here because we're supposed to be. You just don't pack up every time something bad happens. Six people in this neighborhood died that day, and there was millions more in damage. There's still remnants from that tornado in the area. There's still some metal hanging in some trees, as well as debris scattered around. And this week also marks the anniversary of Hurricane Michael, a Category 5 hurricane that made landfall in Florida. Our storm chaser Brett Adair was there as the storm devastated the area. Here's a look back at what he saw as the cyclone came ashore. Category four, almost category five, Hurricane Michael out. We climbed a retaining wall. The truck's probably a loss, but we are okay. We are alive. Here's what's left of the chase truck. It's still here. It sucks. And seven years after Michael devastated the Gulf Coast, a Florida content creator is using social media to help others prepare for hurricanes. This week on our podcast, Off the Radar, she spoke with meteorologist Emily Gracie about her growing online influence. Here's a preview of that episode. I've never experienced such terror in my life. It was as if Mother Nature was screaming at us can't change the weather. You can't make the storm go away. You just have to deal with it and sit in it and pray that you come out on the other side. Seven years ago this week, Hurricane Michael, a Category 5 monster, made landfall and changed Megan Lynn's life forever. 
There's a period of time before the storm, and then there's your life after. And I can tell you, going into a Category 5 storm, you never walk away the same. Today, we're going off the radar to meet a content creator who's reaching millions, sharing life-saving information in a way that's relatable, entertaining, and surprisingly funny. Do not forget to fill your prescriptions before the hurricane hits. I mean, you ain't pulling up to your local CVS or Walgreens asking for your Zipix shot when the storm comes, okay? You gotta get that done for your hurricane. You tend to hold on to something. If you giggle about it, you tend to remember it. That's why I share it the way that I do. Like, it's all factual, but it's just delivered in a way that people, it resonates with people. But the more prepared you are, the less panicked you'll be. And that's my goal in doing all of this. Have a safe hurricane season. And to learn even more about Hurricane Michael, be sure to check out this week's episode of Off the Radar. You can find it anywhere you get your favorite podcasts. And if you're looking for more weather news and video, sure to be sure to check out uh, check us out on social media. We also post content from our team of 200 meteorologists across the country. You can find us on all your favorite social media platforms. Just search Nat Weather Desk or scan that QR code on the bottom left corner of your screen. And coming up on the National Weather Desk, we'll look at why colder weather can have a negative impact on your mental health and what you can do to prevent it. Plus, our weekend weather football forecast. I'm meteorologist Charlie Lopresti with a look at the Northeast. It's a chilly start in the Northeast. Today we're starting the 30s with afternoon highs rebounding back to around 60 degrees. We'll keep a lot of sunshine. More should be expected on Saturday. It's a little bit warmer as well. Most areas on Saturday will warm into the 60s. Note some of the clouds already increasing through New Jersey, southern New England, also southern parts of New York. That's the leading edge of a storm that's going to bring some rain and wind to at least southern parts of the area Sunday into Monday. I'm Chief Meteorologist Gerard Bailey. Here's a look at the Mid-Atlantic region. Looking dry for your Friday, but as we head into Saturday, some spotty shower activity will begin developing out ahead of a stronger uh, coastal low pressure system. That is likely to bring big impacts going into Sunday, but Saturday, spotty showers around. Temperatures will still be on the mild side on Friday afternoon, upper 60s or mid 60s, except for the mountains. A few degrees warmer on Saturday before that heavy rain arrives on Sunday. Hi, meteorologist Jennifer Collins with a look at your southeast forecast. High pressure is settling into the southeast as a frontal boundary moves south over North Florida. This will continue to bring the chance for showers for most of South Florida and even into the Carolinas heading into the start of the weekend with drier conditions for the northern Gulf Coast and the Mississippi River Valley. Afternoon highs on Friday ranging anywhere from the 70s for most of the Carolinas to the low and mid 80s across most of central and south Florida. Upper 70s along the northern Gulf Coast with the 80s in the Mississippi River Valley. Weather Window, presented by the National Weather Desk. The sky over eastern Alabama was positively hypnotic in this time-lapse video of clouds seeming to swirl endlessly in place.